Welcome to the Local Domination Podcast, your ultimate guide to get local clients fast. Featuring interviews with local marketing and lead generation experts who will show you exactly how to attract local clients and dominate your market. And now, here's your host, Doran Aldana. Get this. Every day, local prospects are searching for your products or services online, and they're looking for someone they can trust. Are you capturing that business? How would you like to dominate the local search results with more five-star rave reviews than any of your competitors so you become the only logical, trusted choice? I call it Operation Domination. Download a free copy of our Ultimate Testimonial Toolkit now at MyTestimonialEngine.com forward slash domination. Again, that's MyTestimonialEngine.com forward slash domination and discover how to build your business at the speed of trust. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Local Domination Podcast, your ultimate guide to getting local clients fast. This is your host, Doran Aldana, and we have yet another kick-ass killer episode for you. This one is definitely going to be something that tickles your fancy because it's something that's perennially relevant for every local based business and that is how to infiltrate a vertical any vertical you want to tap into using local search strategies and we've got a bona fide certified qualified expert on the topic the one the only dean heasley so dean thanks for hanging with us today man i'm looking forward to this Absolutely. Thanks for having me on, Doran. Sweet beans, man. Well, let's just do a quick introduction for those who aren't familiar with who you are. This is the, be the only time I read during this uh, episode, and then we'll just go live and organic in a moment. But for those of you who are uninitiated and unacquainted with Dean, here's a quick bio. He's the founder of Nashville Marketing Systems. He helps small businesses and elevator contractors, how's that for a vertical, dominate their local marketplace. He's been consulting with small businesses since 2005, so he's like a brother from another mother because that's when I got started uh, helping mortgage professionals grow their business way back in 2005, so uh, we have that in common. He's also a certified duct tape marketing consultant. Uh, it seems to be uh, we are getting more and more of these certified duct tape marketing consultants on this episode, or I should say on this podcast, because they know what's going on when it comes to local domination and local marketing. And today will certainly be no exception. Uh, he provides custom marketing systems designed to attract ideal customers. He's involved in development of joint venture relationships, partnerships, and dealer networks for his clients. And he is also a specialist at orchestrating complex, high dollar, big ticket sales to government and large organizations. So as you can see, he's got a breadth, a width, uh, an extensive uh, experiential base to draw from in terms of what works and what's working now when it comes to local marketing. So again, thanks for hanging with us today, Dean. Absolutely. Thank you. Sweet, man. Well, let's just jump right into it. Uh, from what I've heard from you and what we talked about before launching the recording for this episode, one of the big points or big ideas that you wanted to drive home and is certainly an area of expertise for you is how to 3x the amount of people who are joining or uh, I should say going to see someone's uh, Google My Business account or profile than their actual website. So the first thing I want to uh, you know, posit as a question is why bother having a Google My Business account? I know there's probably a few people listening who don't even have that. Why bother having one of those? And why is it such a game changer? Why is it mission critical? Sure, it's it's incredibly important because when s the vast majority of searches now are done on a mobile device. So it's automatically location sensitive, your searches. So when you are searching for some type of product or some type of service, nine times out of 10, when you search on your phone, which is where you're most likely going to be searching, you're going to get the map results. Mm -hmm. So the information that pulls up below the map does not come from your website. That comes from information that you have provided to Google specifically for them to serve to their customers. So when somebody does a search, 
they are going to see the information that you have specifically provided to Google about your business before they decide whether or not to visit your website. So three times as many people are gonna see the information that you give to Google, and you do that through the Google My Business portal, uh, as is gonna see your website. So you have to really make the information that you give Google uh, look as good as possible so that when somebody searches and sees you, they want to find out more about your business. Gotcha. Okay. So if I'm a local business and I want maximum uh, visibility with the local search, obviously having a Google My Business account and having it optimized properly is going to be key to making that happen based on what you're talking about. We'll get into more about how to optimize that in a moment. But I'm okay. just curious, how, how did you get to be a expert in this area? How did you get to be, you know, give us a little bit of a journey for you, how you got into being a marketing expert and uh, a local marketing expert in particular. I'm just kind of curious about that. Sure. So uh, like anybody, I, I never, I didn't grow up thinking, wow, I want to sell elevators. <laughs> I did. I never even imagined that that was a job until a friend of mine from high school called me one day and he said, hey, do you want to come work for me selling elevators? And, and I laughed at him. And, uh, and then he told me what he was going to pay me, and I, I stopped laughing. Right. Um, so so I, I went from being very introverted. I used to analyze data for a living. And uh, so I left my data analysis job on a Friday. And on a Monday, I got on an airplane and flew to Dallas, Texas, and uh, tried to sell elevators, which I had no idea how to do at all. Um, but I made it work, um, and I spent 10 years in the elevator industry, and so I traveled all over the country, and I got to know most of the independent elevator contractors all over the United States. Um, uh, my kids are getting older, and so last year I decided to take this full time. Um, got my MBA in '05 and did some marketing consulting on the side while I had my sales career. Um, decided to take it full time and realized I never want to set foot on an airplane again. <laughs> so I, I real quickly. Unless you're going on vacation, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Unless that plane's headed to Hawaii, I am not interested in getting on it. I feel you on that. Um, so I decided that I had to learn as much as possible about local business. Um, and so I used my existing network. Uh, of elevator contractors and rather than sell them elevators now I sell them marketing services um, and they're primarily local based businesses so I kind of had trial by fire and learned real fast what needed to be done to get the phone to ring for these guys so that's kind of how I got started in the in local marketing Gotcha. Yeah, the quintessential entrepreneurial uh, preparation for success. Trial by fire, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Love it. I can certainly relate to that. I know many listening can as well. So let's break this down for the complete tech tard who has no clue about technology and they get sweaty palms when they even think about turning on their computer, let alone using it. Um, sure. Let's say that they're wanting to get going with some local marketing that actually works. And so they've got their Google My Business account set up. What mm -hmm. next? What do they need to do to start showing up on that map and start getting not just visibility, but clicks, calls, and cash from the local search? Sure. So what you have to do really, and it's similar to other forms of SEO, you have to do some work in the Google My Business settings itself. Make sure that your logo looks good uh, on Google and that it's cropped correctly. Don't spend a lot of time on it. If you have to hire somebody in 11th grade who can, you know, who knows Photoshop, go ahead and do that. Don't waste time on tech stuff that is not your forte. Um, put 20 to 30 really high quality pictures in the Google account. Uh, so that when people pull it up and look at it, they can see some good stuff and, you know, not snapshots that you took 15 years ago with Kodak Instamatic, you know, um, really, really good, high quality pictures. If you can afford to get some professional pictures done, I suggest doing that. And then the next thing is, and this is so important, uh, you have to get 
your current clients to give you a positive five-star Google review. And the easiest way is to just ask them to do it. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times I've had clients call me and say, hey, I just had somebody walk in the door because I have 43 Google reviews and the next person in my industry has three. Right. So the, the goal with the Google review is to stabilize your number at 4.8 or 4.9 because you it's not if, but it's when you get some crazy person who doesn't like the color of your van, they're going to give you a one star review for something crazy. <laughs> right. So, you know, the goal is to have, you know, if you've only have two reviews, one is five star and one is one star. Well, all of a sudden you don't look so good to the people searching. Mm -hmm. So you want to, you want to get a bunch of really good reviews. Um, and then the last thing, and this is kind of techie. So I suggest outsourcing this. Make sure that your local directories all have exactly the same name, address, and phone number. And when I say exactly the same, I mean, if your address is 123 Main Street and the M is capitalized and there's it's capital S lowercase t period, make sure that that is the exact same format across all of these local directories. So the big ones are Google, Facebook, Yelp, Apple, and Bing. Those are kind of the big five directories. And then after that, there's hundreds of little ones. So I suggest subscribing to a service. Um, there's some that do it retail. If not, you can call a local marketing guy. You can feel free to call me. Um, and we can put you in a couple different services. But, you know, if Google's looking at your information online and they see 12 different addresses, they're not going to be confident serving your information to their customers, who is who are, that's the people that are searching. So you want your information on these, you know, 150 directories to be exactly, exactly the same. So that's that's kind of the last thing that I would do really to work on the Google My Business optimization. Gotcha. Okay. So have a good quality logo, some good quality photos loaded. Uh, obviously, have complete business data, office hours in there, your website in there. Uh, get Google reviews. The more positive reviews, the better. And also get yourself listed on a variety of uh, uh, directory sites, listing sites, otherwise known mm -hmm. as citations in the local SEO world with the right. correct, consistent, and accurate business name, address, and phone number, otherwise known as NAP, NAP, yes. uh, on places like Google, Yelp, Bing, Apple, Facebook, Yellow Pages, Better Business Bureau, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Is that the idea? That is exactly the idea. Gotcha. So. What about the business that doesn't have any reviews or has very few reviews that shows up on the three pack, that's the first three listings on the Google map on the first page, uh, and they, they're terrible when it comes to reputation, but they're showing up right at the top. Why is that? Sure. So there's a multitude of reasons for that. Um, you know, there's 250 or so different ranking factors for Google, that Google looks at. Um, and they change in weight at least twice a day. Last year, it was around two and a half times a business day that Google changed their algorithm. One of the main uh, factors now is proximity to searcher or proximity to something called the centroid, which contrary to popular belief is not the city center. Um, it's, you know, Google looks at all of these different plot points on a map and figures out where the center of all of those would be, and then it measures the distance from that point. So the point is always changing as people pop up and as people leave the map. So there's a, there's a number of reasons that junky businesses or bad reputation businesses are still popping up number one on the map pack, and part of it is sheer dumb luck as to where they're located. And that is a huge ranking factor now. I hope that Google wises up a little bit and changes uh, changes the weight of that ranking factor because there's a lot of people that are ranking that just should absolutely not be. Um, another reason that they could be ranking high in the map pack is because they have a higher volume of higher quality backlinks. So for the novice out there, a backlink is when another website 
points to your website and Google looks at that as a token of trust. So, you know, if there's somebody who's been in business for 40 years and, you know, they're friends with five of the local newspaper publishers and they get an article every month from their local newspaper, those people are going to rank higher um, even if they don't have a high number of Google reviews. But the smart thing for a business that's already ranking high that doesn't have reviews is just go out and get get a bunch of real positive reviews. And that's the whole point is once you get found online, you want people to be motivated to dig further and go to your website or make a phone call. And if you don't have any good reviews, that's just not going to happen. Gotcha. Okay. So aside from reviews, proximity to the searcher, proximity to the centroid which i've still it sounds like uh, techno babble to me but it sounds like it's closer to the center of town something to that effect is that right more uh, more or less yeah yeah uh backlinks and in terms of the backlinks could the backlinks be from local directories with those citations or are those other backlinks from other sources beyond that uh, backlinks from other sources beyond the citations are considered higher value. Okay. So Google gives something called a domain authority and a, a page authority or a page rank. Um, so the domain authority is the value that Google places on the domain. So like Facebook has a domain authority of 100. You know, CNN's might be 97. Uh, Google's obviously is 100. Um, so, you know, a backlink from the corporate side of one of those is is very valuable. Um, but Google also knows that you don't have to be a legitimate business to get a citation listing on, uh, you know, one of these little ones like Dex or Silex or something like that. So... Uh, they don't put as much weight onto that. So if you can get backlinks from, you know, credible local businesses, the Better Business Bureau is a good one um, because you have to be vetted to join the Better Business Bureau or to be accredited by them. So uh, the higher quality organization that is giving you a backlink, the better in Google's eyes. Gotcha. Now, is it better to use a turnkey service like Yext Power Listings to get these citations, uh, or is it better to get uh, someone from Pakistan or ba Bangladesh or the Philippines to be doing all that manually for you, or does it really not matter? That's a great question, and it does matter. I love Yext, and there's another service that I use called Advice Local, and I love them as well, and they do it in two different ways. So Yext uses an API. So you put the information in once, and then Yext as a software goes out and tells 70 different local directories what your at name, address, and phone number is. So it's all consistent because it's based off the one time you entered it. Right. Advice, Advice Local is different. Theirs is manual, and they have a different um, set of citations and local directories that they use. And those guys, they've got a team in California and a team in Texas and a team in Florida that manually enters all of that information. Um, and I've found for my clients that a combination of the two is best. Interesting. So could you, in theory, hire someone, an expert out of India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, etc., cetera, uh, through a place like Upwork or you know, one of those freelancing sites to the, do the same thing that Advice Local does? Or do they do something proprietary that they're not able to replicate? Uh, the thing that I like about Advice Local is you're, you have the ability to change your information, to update your information as you go. So there's an upfront fee, and then that's a couple bucks a month to maintain it. Um, whereas if you had the guy from India or Pakistan who you outsourced the work to, um, initially the work would be the same, but on an ongoing basis, I think it would be a lot easier and a lot more cost effective to just enter the information, the new information in Advice Local and have those guys update it manually. Gotcha. So a combination of Yex and Advice Local covers the full width and breadth of all the relevant directory sites, publisher sites out there to get your business name address and phone number cited on. Is that the idea? 
That is exactly the idea. Between the two of them, you cover about 120 local directories. Gotcha. Okay. Just so people know for the uninitiated, uh, if you do indeed want more reviews, uh, you can certainly uh, reach out to Dean. He has uh, some good technique strategies for that. As you well, uh, as many of you are aware, we have the testimonial engine software that automates that process of getting reviews and then getting review sites on, uh, you know, getting your reviews on review sites that matter like Yelp. Uh, or business, uh, your better your uh, Google My Business account, or Facebook, or any of those niche specific review sites, and we also have an API integration with Yext, so we can flip a switch and be able to get you on 65, 70 plus directory sites instantly uh, with a flip of a switch in your dashboard. So keep that in mind. Those are certainly some uh, solutions, and I was not aware of Advice Local, so I'm definitely gonna have to check that out and uh, keep that in our preferred vendor Rolodex, that's awesome. So we've got the, uh, the the Google My Business set up. Let's just say we've got some reviews now. We've got our citations on uh, a variety of different uh, listing sites and directory sites with our business name, address, and phone number. Is it case closed? Is the job done? Or is there more that we can do to really pour gasoline on the fire here with the local search? What's next? Sure, with the local search, uh, you know, once you get once it's easy for people to find you, then you have to look good when they find you. Gotcha. Um, so your website has to be mobile friendly. Google has started what's called mobile first, where they used to send their spiders out and their spiders would crawl the desktop versions of websites first. And then if they had a mobile website, that was great. Well, now they're doing the opposite. Now they're crawling mobile f- websites first and then afterwards, they're looking at the desktop sites. So the first most important thing is make sure that your website looks good on a phone. Now, most people have been updating their sites over the past couple of years, so it shouldn't be a problem for most businesses. But you know, I had a client call me last year and say, hey, I need a new website. I still have Flash on my homepage. And uh, so, so we we got him fixed up right away, um, and his his site looks good on on a, a cell phone now. Um, and the second thing, and this is so important, it drives me nuts because it's so easy. Have a clickable phone number in your header or at the top of your website, mm. and it's it's so simple. And it's so easy, and so many people don't do it. Mm-hmm. Um, or if they do it, they, they don't do it right. This is a true story. Two weeks ago, I took on a new client, and I was doing an audit of his website. And I saw that he had a clickable phone number in the upper right. I was like, that's great. I clicked the phone number, and do you know what came up on my phone? 8675309. Oh, no, it didn't have the Seriously. area code. <laughs> well, it didn't have the area code, but you're, you're young, so you may not remember the song, but Jenny Jenny, who's, who... Who's got your number? Yeah, the number in that song was eight six seven five three zero nine. So, so it wasn't the real it, number. It would no, it wasn't the real number. <laughs> I called it, and it was like a it was a plumber, and my client is not a plumber. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, that's it, it a prime like example some, of the sales yeah, prevention department right there. It, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it was some some web guy's inside joke that just never got fixed. Oh dear. And, yeah, and chances are it was months since he launched his website. I was almost a year. Yes, <laughs> oh, that's painful. <laughs> it, it is. It really is. So we got we got that fixed. One of the, one of the first things we did. Um, but yeah, having that clickable phone number is so important. And you know, one of my other pet peeves, and I know it's easy for spammers to you know crawl your website and get your email address, but just put an email address on your website and deal with the spam. Uh, I'm a big advocate of anything that lets your prospects and potential customers get in touch with you easier is a good thing. So I have my own personal email address all over my website. I I know from a tech standpoint, it's probably not uh, great for spam, but, you know, it makes it easy for my clients to get in touch with me. So what's your take on uh, web forms versus just giving them your email. Do you think there's an advantage either way, or are they pretty much on par? Uh, I've got both, and they're right next to each other. And it it really depends uh, on on the customer and what they're comfortable with. Um, and you know, a lot of it is is age based. I, I'd prefer to call somebody, 
Um, but then I have some clients that just want to send me an email. And then I have a lot of younger clients that they just want to do the web form. Right. So it depends. And I just, I give all three options. Sure. Um, anything that makes it easy for somebody to be in touch with you, do that. Gotcha. Okay. Well, these are some really good distinctions. So mobile friendly website, clickable phone number, and email address on your website as well as your phone number and the web form. Give them as many options as possible. Something for everyone, a flavor for everybody, for everyone's particular taste. Exactly. And let's say someone has a Cro-Magnon website and it's still from the dark era. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at myself right now because I have one that's still in the dark era that hasn't been upgraded <laughs> to the mobile uh, friendly version. Where is a good place to start? Like, what should I be, you know, for someone who is like me, who knows they need to do it, but haven't, hasn't gone around to it and hasn't seen a pressing need for it and is finally ready to pull the trigger and do something about it. Where do they start? What are some things to consider in terms of finding the right vendor, how to avoid paying way too much and getting a lemon vendor who just, uh, you know, executes highway robbery and gives you a, a lackluster site with uh, a big bill to pay. Sure. And I've, you know, I've seen it where clients have come to me and they say, you know, I, I got this new website a year ago. It looks ugly. It doesn't look good on a phone. It's just, it's a mess. And they've, you know, paid five, six, seven thousand dollars for it. And, uh, you know, it, I think the main, there's, there's really two things. One is look for uh, a portfolio on someone's website that they can so that you can see that they've done actual good quality work mm -hmm. um, and then look at that portfolio on your phone mm -hmm. don't, don't just look at it don't sit there one day and look at it on your laptop and say oh they're great you have to pull up those websites on your mobile phone to see how well they render um, and the second thing is talk to other people that have used them so get get references client reviews yeah client reviews are so important that third party credibility mm -hmm. um is is vital so uh you know just just talk to people and find out really the the responsiveness because there's a lot of web guys that do a great job putting a website together and then they disappear so if you need anything changed they're they're just not available to to fix it and the other thing i would say Make sure that it's in WordPress. I, I know some people don't like WordPress, but you know a third of the internet is built on WordPress. Mm. And the nice thing about that is uh, you can get really good expertise on WordPress if you need it. Right. So if you know if you have somebody build you a website and it's proprietary, like I've got a client who had his next door neighbor build him an incredibly beautiful website. But the entire website was in HTML. Oh wow! Yeah, nobody could nobody could get in there and fix it, or they would break everything. So, you know, have your website built in a CMS, a content management system that everybody can fix. It's it, you know, do you want to buy a Ford F one hundred and fifty that any mechanic can work on, or you know, do you want to buy some weird thing? from India that nobody knows how to deal with. You know, get the common thing that everybody can work on and fix. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I'm glad I asked that question. That was very timely. <laughs> <laughs> very timely. Well, that's brilliant. So what's uh, one more thing that I haven't asked you about local search domination that I should have asked you that had I asked you, it would reveal a golden nugget that everyone needs to know. <laughs> so as far as local search domination, one thing that I think a lot of people don't consider is uh, the offline work that you do. So I started my business officially a year ago, even though I'd been doing it on the side for about 11 or 12 years. And a majority of my business comes through networking. Hmm. So even though I do digital marketing strategy professionally, the vast majority of my business comes from face-to-face -face interaction. And the reason is people want to know you, they want to like you, and they want to trust you. Um, I get that from John Jantz, who founded the Duct Tape Marketing Network. Mm -hmm. um, so... And once they know, like, and trust you, 
they're going to do some research on you. And that's when a good looking website, a good high quality review presence online, that's when that's really going to pay off. So, you know, a big part of dominating your local market, and I know that a lot of your listeners are they're dentists, they're chiropractors, they're mortgage brokers, they're real estate agents. Um, for those types of industries, networking is really part of the lifeblood. But having a credible online presence bolsters that lifeblood. Mm-hmm. You know, if you know if, if you meet somebody at a chamber event and they remember you and they go and try to find you and they can't find you or they do find you and you've got an average of two stars out of five or your website is crazy and they can't find anything, that doesn't look good. Then you've wasted all that time uh, and effort from your networking. So online and offline, the combination of those two, that layered marketing is really where you're going to dominate your local marketplace. I wholeheartedly agree, and I think they cross pollinate quite well. I mean, if you're uh, absolutely if you're dominating online with great reviews, why not take those reviews and put them into a review booklet and give them to people people live when you meet with them face to face? You know, a big old coil bound review booklet of all the best rave reviews from your happy clients. It cross pollinates quite well, and it helps you initiate and establish those solid relationships. Because let's face it. It's one thing if you say you're so great. It's a whole other thing if dozens and dozens and dozens of your happy clients say you're great. And studies show that people believe what your clients say about you 12 times more than what you say about you. So it just makes sense to leverage uh, both online and offline and cross-pollinate between the two and have them both work synergistically together. So I love that. Um, You're still with me, yes? Yes, I am Okay, awesome. Well, how can people get a hold of you if uh, they want to get in touch with you, they want to go deeper into your work, they want to learn about your your services and how you can help them execute some of the things we talked about today, what's the best for, way for people to reach you? Sure, the best way is uh, NashvilleMarketingSystems.com uh, or they can send me an email, Dean at NashMark.com, N-A-S-H-M-A-R-K, short for Nashville Marketing Systems because that's a lot, of, a lot to type in your email uh, form. So Dean at NashMark.com or NashvilleMarketingSystems.com. Sweet beans. And uh, just curious, do your clients need to be in Nashville to work with you? (laughs) No, no. That's a great question. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, I have clients in uh, a bunch of different states. I've got clients in Florida. I have clients in Georgia, North Carolina, Alabama, uh, you know, all, all over the country. Awesome. So great. If you uh, digged Dean's stuff as much as I did, you definitely want to reach out to him, get on his uh, newsletter list, uh, get plugged into what he's up to and his updates and his educational pieces that he uh, sends out to his peeps on a regular basis. And uh, certainly if you want help executing, reach out to him and he can give you more information on how he can help you take your dream, take your idea, make it real. Um, That being said, Dean, what's one last lingering nugget, golden gem you'd like people to marinate their minds on as we leave this episode today? That's a great question. Um, And one of the pre-show questions was, you know, do you have a mantra that you say to yourself or, or something like that? And when I was in sales, because sales was not necessarily part of my uh, personality, I would say to myself over and over again, my bosses aren't paying me to tell them no. <laughs> so, my you know, bosses they, aren't paying me to tell them no. Exactly. And uh-huh. now that I'm now that I'm the boss, I'm not paying myself to say no, and I'm definitely not getting paid to tell myself no. Right. So, you know, if I have follow up calls that I don't want to make. I'm not getting paid to tell myself no. I love that. Yeah, that's the uh, can-do attitude just seen from a different perspective. Reminding ourselves the truth of the matter. If it is to be, it's up to me. When we eat what we kill, we got to get ourselves off our assets and get to work and (laughs) find our way. You know, we got to find a way to get ourselves to do the things we don't want to do so we can have the results most people aren't going to get. And so that's that's a great point. Thank you for that reminder. Well, folks, it's been a pleasure hanging with Dean today. Thank you so much, Dean, for hanging with us and giving us some great stuff. Really appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you. 
That's all for now, my friends. Thanks for joining us for another episode of the Local Domination Podcast, your ultimate guide to getting local clients fast. So if tips galore to help you soar is what you adore, know this, we got more in store. Remember, nothing happens without implementation. So in the meantime, in between time, go forth, engage. It's time for Operation Domination. <laughs>